Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Thanks for joining me again today, everybody. I am actually really eager to share this information with you today, this bright and beautiful day in California. I am chatting with Al Kushner. He has written a book called The Savvy Guide to Burial Insurance. And I know, don't don't click off just yet. Trust me, you're going to love it. So thanks for joining me, Al. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you. I'm sure you have a backstory as to why you wrote this, because this is probably not a topic that lots and lots of people are just itching to write about. So can you can you tell me what the muse was for st- writing the sure. book? Absolutely. Well, uh, I would say last year at this time, I think everyone was experiencing a lot of uh, changes that were uh, really unnatural. Uh, I think they called it the pandemic. Yeah, and, something like um, that. Right. So uh, I said, well, this is a good time to kind of sit back and maybe write a book because I, I think that really is uh, about pretty much what you can do, you know, during this period. I mean, you really couldn't do much about seeing people. Everything was pretty much shut down. So I figured let's take advantage of the uh, opportunity. And uh, I wrote the book uh, during this time period to uh, enlighten people about some of the uh, challenges they face when it comes to uh, paying for funerals. Because that's pretty much what was going all around. I mean, if you look at the uh, between now and then, we're looking at close to 550,000 Americans have died as a result mm-hmm. of this. And a lot of the uh, families uh, were devastated by the financial uh, ramifications that uh, occurred uh, as a result of it. I mean, uh, funerals were averaging anywhere from 15 to 20, 25,000 at least. Uh, so it really was a sticker shock when people realized that uh, how they're going to pay for that. And uh, so that's why I wrote the book and really to uh, let people know that uh, there are uh, options uh, available so they can be prepared for the unexpected. Well, it's, it should be expected that hopefully my paternal grandmother lived to be 103. And so when my paternal grandfather, before he passed away, he planned everything. And she's made some adjustments to it, which I find interesting, but that's okay. He's he's buried lead-lined coffin. I'm sure that was cheap. Um, they have like a dual plot with a dual headstone, which always freaked oh. her out. And he passed away in 97, December of 97. She's no longer with us in 2021. So, you know, it's like a long time between, you know, they, they put her name on the headstone and thankfully they didn't put 1918-19 lump because then they would have had to i don't know how you fix screwed up marble headstone but they were smart enough not to do that but she's going to be cremated and then put there so that's interesting to me thankfully for our family my dad pretty much pre-planned his he planned his his funeral i guess for you know he (laughs) my dad was a practical soul and he's like Mm -hmm. he's looking at the options from the funeral home and he says just the cardboard box and the cremation is good for me. And I seriously thought he was a little bit joking. But after he passed away, Uh the funeral home director, who was kind of a family friend, thankfully, had to explain to my sister and I that, um, yeah, we couldn't use the cardboard box because, you know, my dad wasn't just this petite little thing. (laughs) I'm like, it's fine, whatever we need to do. But I mean, I seriously didn't know that was really an option, but it really is sort of so yeah what kind of options should we start thinking about well um i think the thing to look at is um what do you have in place right now you know uh, assess your situation um do you have life insurance uh, uh currently now what type of coverage do you have and what is the amount of coverage a lot of people may have a term insurance and that tends to expire at age 70. So when you get to that point, you either have to drop the coverage because it's too expensive or they don't allow you to go more uh, beyond that age. So then you're looking at uh, permanent insurance, which uh, can go beyond age 70, usually up to age 100, and will pay out the face amount at any time uh, should one pass unexpectedly. So that's something that a lot of people really need to address uh, that issue and uh, it's a very simple process uh, in fact a lot of times uh, you can apply 
and be um, covered in less than 30 minutes. So, and all online. So it really is very uh, convenient to have available and easy to do uh, and uh, just simple questions to be asked. Uh, there's no any type of physical that's needed. So it really gives you a way to um, get this done and, and put it behind you. Just kind of give you a peace of mind knowing that your loved ones won't have to pay for the funeral expense that occurs, what we call final expense. So hopefully uh, the book will educate uh, on how to go about doing that. So that's a, that's a good thing. I've learned planning ahead is definitely, it clears your mind. You're not, you wouldn't think that you'd be worrying about your own funeral because you're gone. You don't care. All, you know, I've talked to people who, you know, they don't want to talk about it. And it's like, you know, it's like, I'm sorry, but none of us gets out of this life alive. I've said that a lot. That is yeah. a quote from my maternal grandfather. He said it all the time. So far, it's been true. You know, my parents are gone. My grandparents are gone. So, okay. you know, I've got lost dogs. We don't get out of this life alive. But when you plan ahead, it just takes this like mental burden that you didn't realize is there off your shoulder and, and you're, you don't have to think about it anymore. So you, if you don't want to deal with it, you don't want to think about it, do it once. Get it put away where somebody mm -hmm. can find it because we did have to kind of hunt down my dad's stuff. Yeah. You know, we kind of yeah. tripped on the obituary that he wrote himself. Right. Kind of by accident. And I don't know if anybody's done that. My dad's obituary, and it's been a little over four years. We edited mm -hmm. edited it down. That is such a tough word to say. As much as possible it was still right. over a thousand dollars to run. I think it was just mm -hmm. one Sunday. It's expensive. Right. <laughs> yeah, it is. And uh and that's really what people don't realize. It's the sticker shock. I mean, you have that, you have the coffin, you have the flower arrangements, depending on how you're going about doing it and how many people you expect to be attending uh, the event. I mean, if you have a very large family, it could be hundreds. Uh, and so that has to be taken into consideration when uh, planning uh, that type of uh, event. And uh, that's important. What happens is that, you know, once uh, uh, an individual passes away, usually within 24 to 48 hours, insurance company will uh, pay out uh, the benefit uh, to the beneficiary that's de designated. So that's that's important because that's what's really needed. And uh, the, um, the funeral homes usually will work with you uh, once they know that you have a policy. So they can go ahead and take care of the arrangements that are needed uh, during the process time because that's usually a critical time uh, getting all the arrangements in order. So this is why, you know, planning in advance is, is definitely key. And uh, and the book really uh, uh, gets into uh, how to uh, address those issues and um, and be educated about how to do the process. So that's a good thing. It's a good resource. That's true. Is it typical? My dad's funeral was huge. And unfortunately, my mom passed away right at the start of COVID. So she has had no funeral and has not been interned with my dad. They're both cremated. It's super mm -hmm. frustrating. Okay. Is it normal to have like a meal? We had a, a lunch catered after my dad's service, which was probably one of the higher ticket priced items. Right. Sure. Is that pretty typical across the country? I guess it depends on um, the amount of people that are in attendance and maybe your religious beliefs. Uh, every, every situation is different. Uh, I know in uh, Judaism, they usually have uh, seven days that they have to sit uh and uh pray during that time period and uh that's usually a catered event uh mm -hmm. but that also is every day you know uh meals are planned accordingly so you have to you know allow for that kind of expense that's involved so these things needs to be looked at in terms of you know what you visualize that you want to have happen uh when you do pass away so this is something that you have to kind of like break it down in terms of cost who's going to plan it uh, who will help to, uh, you know, cater the event if that's something that needs to be uh, planned. So it depends on how many people expected and um, the quality that you're looking for. I knew about sitting Shiva. I did not realize you had to feed people the whole time. That's, yeah, they, I don't know how they, that's news to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I've, I've attended several and I haven't seen anyone that, you know, didn't have anything, something to eat at least at the point, because it is a gathering. And, you know, you want people to pay their respects and obviously to maybe enjoy themselves at least during the time period as, as a way to memorizing uh, the individual. 
So that's usually what uh, occurs. Uh, and that's, I think, a good thing. So every religion is different in how you look at it. But uh, that is part of the expenses associated with um, uh, preparing for one's final expense. Well, I can definitely attest to when you talk about it, plan ahead. Just there's so much that happens after somebody passes away. And with my dad, thankfully, we are not Jewish because I don't know how we would sit Shiva with my mom who had advanced Alzheimer's. I don't know how we would, I don't know how we would have handled all that with her. It would have been just so stressful, but it's already a difficult time. So if you are smart, if you're a planner like me, you've discussed it with your family. We haven't pre-planned much, but quite that old yet, but I do realize that things can happen. And, but our, my family, my husband and I, my daughter, and I call him the almost son-in-law because their wedding keeps getting postponed because of COVID. Right. They finally, I think they gave up on 21 again, or I don't remember. Anyway, we've discussed yeah. like what we want, what we don't want, and it won't be a big deal. My dad's funeral was huge, probably about mm -hmm. 300 people. Mm -hmm. And with okay. my mom, because people drift away, it had been three years since my dad passed away. Yeah. It's like, ugh. It's like last year seems like it's a fuzzy right. memory. It's quite strange. Sure. She passed away three years after he did. And, you know, other people have died. People have drifted away because dealing with somebody with advanced Alzheimer's is hard enough. So right. I had I had the brilliant idea of doing a dessert bar for maybe 30 to 50 people. Mm -hmm. And obviously that hasn't happened thanks to this pandemic. So now my next plan is I'm just going to Mother's Day of 2022. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. have a celebratory honoring moms kind of day. So my grandmothers, my mom. My aunts are all still with us, so don't have to worry mm -hmm. about them just yet. But it's, and we might have a dessert bar or a tea, but the dessert bar is because my mom was a sugar fiend. Okay. And it was also, I, my dad's funeral was so large, it was almost overwhelming. And I'm like, I don't want to do that again. Well, I, I kind of got my wish because we haven't been able to do anything. So I strongly <laughs> suggest people plan ahead because it takes a burden off your family. And you don't have to, you know, tell them, here's the information. It's in this book or this binder or this digital file, wherever. Make sure somebody knows where to find it. And then you don't have to worry about it again unless you want to update it. Well, yeah, you should always revisit, I would say, um, every several years because things can change. You know, uh, beneficiaries may pass away before you do. So those things need to be updated. But that uh, is always important, like you're doing a will or a living uh, uh, living will or trust. Uh, these are all part of your final expenses to put them in place. So you have a way for your beneficiaries to access that. Like I'm sure we're in your dad's case with 300 people, there was a quite a uh, amount of expense involved and as well as uh, organizing. So I'm not sure if you were involved with that at all or, or someone else had done that, but uh, it's, it's a lot of expense uh, associated with these things. So and I always tell people that if it's something that you're looking to do, you know, don't wait, you know, around till something happens because the younger you are, the healthier you are, the better it is price wise, uh, premium wise. And that's important. Uh, and, and you lock in the rates based on your age. So that's, that's a good thing to have. And, and it's guaranteed, uh, for life. And that's, uh, definitely a, a positive thing when looking at, uh, getting coverage. Um, and a lot of times people have concerns about pre-existing condition, whether the coverage for that. And we have companies that will accept uh, a variety of conditions and even uh, those who have uh, illnesses uh, that they thought they couldn't uh, be covered for, we can get. You know, it's just a matter of uh, having them call and we can help them uh, through uh, uh, the underwriting process and see what uh, options are available. So yeah, there there are definitely ways to uh, prepare, uh, and um, the book definitely educates people as far as uh, the options that are capable of doing. So you is the coverage for people with pre-existing conditions has that changed in the last? Let me think, ten years. Well, there, uh, that, there's a reason there that a I of, ask. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Well, I asked because my dad had two life insurance policies. My mom mm -hmm. had zero. 
And there was some planning on my dad's part that seemed not so swift, like they didn't really plan ahead very well if he died first. But, and he did. So that was a little bit of a challenge. But between renting out their home, his investments, and his life insurance, mom had plenty of money. So I'm, I don't know why she didn't have a life insurance policy. If it was because she had the Alzheimer's, I really have no idea. So that that's your comment about that makes me wonder if it's changed because not that we needed it. Actually, it probably would have been <laughs> it would have would have been a tax nightmare if my mom had even more money when she died. But oh. that's not a typical situation, <laughs> right? Well, I would say that there um, there have been a number of companies that have uh, come to market since 10 years ago and have uh, focused particularly um, in uh, what we call the final expense insurance and are offering uh, policies that are designed to help all variety of uh, health ailments. And sometimes uh, when you work with a company, it's important to work with an independent agent because uh, they will help you to select the best companies based on your uh, situation, which is what we do. There are um, agents that only work with one company, and a lot of times when you apply for coverage, you may get declined or rated, which means that it may take two or three years before the uh, benefit will pay out. Um, so if someone dies within two years or in a certain condition, they'll simply just refund the premium and 10% of whatever the interest is. So that could be uh, problematic if you uh, work with those type of companies. So you really need to have someone experience in order to find out uh, companies that are available based on your uh, health uh, situation. And also your age too makes a difference. I mean, if you're uh, 85 years old, a lot of companies will write individuals that age. Uh, we happen to have a few of those that do, but uh, don't get discouraged if you've been turned down. There's always ways to find out, just need to uh, or contact myself or my staff and we'll be able to find out what uh, options are available so you can see uh, ways to make an informed decision so yeah we can definitely help so are there is the book talk but primi primarily i can say that right on insurance options for paying for final expenses are there any besides gofundme which let's not talk about that Right. Are there any other creative methods that people should consider? Or well, we, should, um, we should plan ahead well, better. Planning ahead, obviously, is, is to your advantage. Uh, there are funeral homes that offer what we call a pre-need a pre planning, I guess they call that, whereby uh, you would uh, make a payment uh, plan with the funeral home to cover the expenses uh, at that time. And some people go that route, um, thinking that maybe they would save some money, uh, sometimes it's convenient, uh, if it's in the area that they live in and, you know, they want some familiarity. Uh, the only drawback is that, you know, if something happens to the funeral home, then you're out of luck, you know, at that time. Or if you have family members all over the country, it may not be convenient for them to get to that particular location. Or if you move, then what do you do? You still have to go back to the same home. So that's why, uh, the, uh, the, burial insurance gives you those options where uh, the beneficiary just gets the check and they can do whatever they want to at that time. And that may be to their advantage. You know, they may want to have a funeral close to all the relatives and they can have the body sent over to that location and, and be able to uh, prepare uh, the arrangements that's convenient for them. So that's, uh, those are some of the options available. So I would say it's between uh, GoFundMe page uh, uh, pre-need planning with a funeral home or life insurance. Those pretty much are the three options uh, other than using your own um, credit cards and savings. That's really the only things that are available. And some people think that uh, the government is going to take care of them, but uh, they're not. So they need to really kind of step up and say, well, we need to look at this. And it's this topic that no nobody really talks about, but if you've experienced it at least once in your lifetime, then you know that you have to take the next step. It's really, it really amazes me. Some people don't really want to move forward with it because maybe they fear dying, I guess, uh, as a result of taking out a policy. I think 
It's just uh, a, way, a way of caring for a loved one. If you care for someone and you want to make sure that you're not leaving a, a debt behind, then you need to really do this as soon as, as soon as you can. So you don't have to worry about this. And you can put at least one thing behind you that you know that this process is taken care of. And that's what I would recommend uh, for people to do and, uh, and learn about uh, what uh, they can prepare. And of course, uh, having a will is, is a good idea as well uh, to take care of um, your estate. If you have a sizable estate, estate planning uh, is also important to protect one's assets uh, during this uh, uh, period of time. So uh, there are a number of, um, I would say, advisors that you would work with, a team. Uh, that would include uh, an attorney, preferably an elder law attorney, possibly um, an estate planning attorney, uh, a CPA, if you are working with an accountant, uh, that's also part of your team, uh, and uh, a financial planner or, or insurance specialist that would uh, be uh, what we call uh, your, uh, your team to help uh, in the planning process. So once you have that in order, you are in a better position to prepare for the unexpected. Which, if we didn't learn that the unexpected can seriously happen after last year, I have no hope for, for people learning that one. Yeah, <laughs> I have, right. I have a comment about estate planning because we did ours finally in 2020. And as I mentioned a minute ago, we have one daughter and an almost son-in-law. And she's 25 years younger than me so of course i never think of her passing before either her myself or my her dad and as we're planning the the estate attorney said well what happens if she goes first and i was like well that's a really unpleasant question <laughs> and i mean it was you don't really want to think about those things but you had to think about it and then so we talked to her and the almost 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 husband and you know, it's like, you know, we didn't come to a hundred percent conclusion just yet, but we talked about it and now it's kind of almost a joke, which that's my family's a little bit, we're a little bit weird, but that's okay. But it's, you know, it's like, I don't think I would have ever thought about that without his, his asking. And we talked about, I know we talked about final arrangements, but now I can't remember Exactly. I don't think we've like finalized those. I better go check. It's not even a year old. Now I'm going to have to go look at it. But we talked about yeah. what happens if one of us gets Alzheimer's. What happens if the daughter dies for before us, and what we want to do with ourselves after we're no longer around. And you know what? It's really not that. You know, it sounds like it would be depressing, and you know, oh gosh, I got to think about all these things. But it really, it's just if you haven't thought yeah. about them before, I would be surprised. And we've talked about cremation you know there's options to be balled up and turned into a tree mm -hmm. um i know somebody that's taken her mother's cremains and turned them into resin pieces of it's i don't know if it's jewelry yet but it probably will end up that way and they're beautiful you would never know it sounds creepy but it, it, they're actually quite beautiful well uh i, I have a resource section uh, in the book uh that actually gives options for example um uh, if you want to be uh, taken up, let's say, into space, there's a company that actually will take your ashes up into the uh, atmosphere or the stratosphere. So uh, it could be scattered <laughs> in, that, in that respect. Uh, we have uh, companies that go and put it in the ocean and uh, be part of the marine life. So uh, there are a lot of creative ways of, uh, of going out and, uh, in style, I guess. So <laughs> it's just uh, your, your imagination, I guess, is the limits. Uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, we, we do have resources in the book that talk about it. and uh, But I, I think it's just a matter of uh, what uh, kind of legacy that you want to leave behind. And that's really what it, uh, it's all about. So uh, but it's good that you did some estate planning. Most people usually don't. Uh, yeah, that's what I learned. I felt, I felt like we were way behind the, you know, we were way behind. So we were basically 54 or 56. It was... We finished it right before our birthdays, but for the most part, you know, mid fifties seems like a little late, late to the party, but according to everybody I've talked to, they're like, oh no, a lot of people don't do this. And let me tell you, having a financial planner and let's see, who else did my dad have? The financial planner and his, their living trust mm -hmm. really saved our hide when my dad suddenly ended up with 
no conscious memory of now. He thought it was 1998 and it was 2016. That was a fun mm -hmm. afternoon. And cool. our relationships with these people. Now, my paternal grandfather, my dad, and my husband and I, my husband and I are still around, but they're all, we're all Rotarians. And so all of these people that we've dealt with are Rotarians. The funeral director, the CPA, mm -hmm. the state planning attorney, our insurance person, our financial person. It's like, it's yeah. definitely a club. And it's just, it saved our hide. And what didn't save our hide was him not discussing it. You know, I know how people don't want, you don't want to talk about it. It's like, oh, hey, thanks for coming to visit. Let's, let's talk about death planning. Like, yeah, no, let's not. But it's, it really would have been, it would have saved some issues with family. Because sure. there was, you know, as usual, differences of, of opinion. And that's just, it really, it's really not that big a deal. You plan it, you talk about it a little bit, you update it when you need to, and you move on. You don't have to worry about it. Your family is not stressed out. If something happens to you before you die, there's not added burdens when you are gone, because nobody wants to do that to your family. At least I hope you don't. <laughs> Yeah. So where can people, the book is out now, correct? Yeah, it's available. Um, you can go on Amazon. It's an available on uh, Walmart and online, obviously. You can get it. Uh, comes in an ebook form, a print version, available. And we're currently working an audiobook version as well. For those who are um, who just prefer that method, uh, it's, uh, it's definitely helpful. So uh, the... The important thing is that uh, is to read it, uh, become aware of uh, what is uh, what is important, and just uh, take the steps so you be ca you can make an informed decision. That's really what it boils down to. And we find that most people uh, very uh, when they read it, they are almost surprised at how easy it is to get it. And a lot of times, that if they have a pre-existing condition we can certainly get them coverage where they thought they couldn't get it at all. So that I think is uh, definitely uh, a good thing and uh, gives them uh, hope that uh, they can actually uh, leave behind uh, a legacy and, and, and not bills that yeah. usually end up going to their beneficiaries. And that's, that's a challenge, but uh, if they uh, take the right step. Uh, this is definitely the way to go is, is planning ahead and uh taking care of your affairs that's really what it's all about yeah that's part of living is taking care of all of our affairs right paying bills handling lives our lives <laughs> just just one more thing we have to do now where can people find you if they want to talk to you specifically about insurance or the book or yeah well sure well obviously my, my information's in the book if they uh, get that i also have a website uh savvy uh, uh savvy dot tips yeah i believe yeah savvy guy dot tips um i have an 800 number uh, yeah, but, but mostly you can go to the website uh although the book has all my information um uh, and i'm happy to help uh, my team is ready to uh answer any questions that you have and uh just uh understand that it's, it's really not a difficult process uh, what's great about it is that it could all be done online uh there's no doctor who's going to go to home and draw blood from you it's not even needed no physical is needed and we can insure most people in less than 30 minutes so that's really a nice thing so it's just something you can just get it done and over with you know it's no different than um, other forms nowadays uh, and especially nowadays with uh, with covid and the pandemic uh, you know really you know don't put this off because you'll come to a situation where you may not be eligible to get covered and that's it. And then you'll have to look at other options, which usually include savings and any other things you may need to sell in order to cover those expenses. And it's usually the loved ones have to go and be put in a very, uh, you know, delicate situation because they're dealing with the, the loss, but also they're dealing with the expenses associated with it. And you don't want to put them in that position. I know I don't. And, uh, hopefully they could, uh, uh, move forward uh, with the right information so yeah that's the way to do it sounds terrific well the website is linked in the show notes so it's a hot link you can click on it find the phone number there's a hot link for the book in the show notes so you can just go and order it well do we know when the audio version will be out 
I would say probably around, uh, I'm working with them right now, probably the first week of May, looking at. And that, that'll be available on uh, uh, Amazon as well as Walmart, all uh, retailers that carry uh, audiobooks. Uh, I believe libraries also should have access to that as well. So that would be great. So we try to, you know, uh, be uh, available in, in all places. So make it convenient for people to do because I know a lot of people don't want to venture out into retail establishments until uh, this pandemic is over with. So uh, you can easily uh, go uh, to the website. You can download as an ebook, order it as a print uh, version, and the audiobook will also be available uh, shortly. So, yeah. Terrific. Because that's, for some reason, that sounds like information I'd rather listen to for some reason. Probably because I'm a podcaster and a podcast listener. I like to, I, I get a lot of news and information through audio, but I like to read too. too. So, <laughs> that's yeah, good. Like that that's as well. More <laughs> it's, it's amazing because, you know, when you're driving, I mean, I, I love listening to audio and it really just, uh, it just, um, I guess some people like that. They're designed in a way that, they're like audio um, or, you know, I guess, more lean, leaning towards that as versus some people would like to, to read and, and print versions. Uh, so, you know, you try to make it accommodating for all types, and that's what we try to do. And uh, particularly the visually impaired, they also will uh, benefit from that uh, because they want to be able to at least get the information in a form that is more easy to digest. So we're uh, we're we're happy to get that uh, underway. So, yeah. That sounds terrific. And like we've said, this really is not depressing, talking about it, planning it. It really, to me, it just, it was like, ah, oh, this burden that I didn't realize that I had was just like gone. Now, and then my husband made the joke because, you know, our daughter's a millennial as we're finishing up our estate planning. It's like, we're adulting. <laughs> it's like, I would hope so at 54 and 56. So it really does, it's, you actually kind of feel good about yourself because you're doing something nice for your loved ones. Cause you know, when somebody dies, it's not fun. It's sad. Even with my grandmother at 103, you know, it's like, <laughs> sometimes there were days it's like, are you going to outlive me? But you know, it's still hard. Cause I'm sad for us, not her. She had a fantastic, interesting, full life. But I'm sad that we don't get to experience more of it with her, especially after this past year. There's a lot. She didn't do so great. You know, the pandemic prevented us from doing pretty much everything. So, you know, that, that's what that's where my, you know, I don't want to say sadness, but a little bit of sadness comes in. But, you know, everything was planned, which made it very easy for her two remaining sons and my aunt, who the, the aunt that's been taking care of my grandmother for about 20 years. It's just, you know. When you just execute the plan, it's so much easier when you're dealing with emotions. So I think this is well, going to yeah. be a fantastic and, and book. Yeah, and, and you have uh, firsthand knowledge, so you know that um, when you plan like your father did, planning ahead uh, was the best thing he could have ever done to make sure that whatever he wanted to leave behind is something that uh, you wouldn't have to worry about. And that's really what it's all about is this taking the burden off others and letting uh, your wishes to be uh, done your way. And that's really uh, a great thing. That's true. My family is a bunch of control freaks. So <laughs> doing it our way is the way we always want everything. So that's pretty funny. So is there any last hmm. bit of information before I let you run off? No, no, I'll just um, uh, go to your website and reach out to the links and uh, the contact information is over there. And uh, I would say that uh, you know, read the information, have any questions, uh, reach out. I'm happy to help. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity you've given me to share some of my information and hopefully um, get people uh, started, you know, uh, put a little fire underneath them and hopefully things happen. So that's, uh, is, that's great. This is true. And uh, I'll definitely help light the match because, like I've said, this is I'm repeating myself now. It's not because my brain's not working. It's not as depressing as you might think. So just go with it. Make yourself take the burden off yourself. Take the burden off your family. They're going to love you even more when they realize, oh my God, this is like five less things that I have to do right now. Absolutely. Well, thank you. And, You're uh, welcome. 
Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts.